Mercedes-Benz W163 power steering hose high pressure line replacement. Check the pin comment for the Tom Stamps. Diagnostics is next. The repair starts at about the 220 mark. Important information about the power steering fluid is discussed at about the 1745 mark. The flush and bleeding procedure starts at about the 2230 mark. Just a quick tip before you get started to kind of think through how you're going to do this repair. I have the ML on ramps right now. Uh, that will work for the repair, but it's not going to work when it comes time to bleed. The reason is because the wheels have to be elevated uh, when it comes time to bleed. So what I'm going to do is I've got her up on ramps right now. I'm going to do the, all the work replacing the line because I have more room to work when she's on ramps. Then after I've got the line replaced without starting the engine, I'm just going to push her off the ramps. Then when she's down, I'll go ahead and lift her up onto jack stands so that the wheels are off the ground, and that's what we'll need to do to do the bleed. If you're just going to do the whole job on jack stands, that's fine. You don't have to make any changes, but if you plan on using ramps at any part of your repair, you just remember that you do not want to turn the engine on before we do the bleed because you'll pull in too much air and it'll become very difficult to get that air out. If you'd like, you can try to empty out the reservoir either using like a turkey baster or even something like this from like a hand soap dispenser. Just something that'll fit into the little hole and then you can squirt it out. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm just going to let it drain out of the bottom of the hose when we open it. We'll have a look under here at this leak and you can see there's a drop of it there because it's all, it's all collecting right here. And I'll show you where that's coming from. You can see that's making a pretty good mess there. Dripping all dripping off on the bottom of that steering rack. If we scoot down under here, we can have a closer look. And there it is right there. So that's the part we're gonna be replacing. And that hose is the supply line. The other side of it runs into the power steering pump, which is under the reservoir, which you just saw. Right there. So up front, we, it looks like we got a flare fitting and then we have the banjo in the back. That fastener there, that's a banjo bolt. And I think we'll go ahead and start down here. That there's a 22 millimeter and this is, uh, I think this is going to be pretty messy because even with uh, even with fluid removed from the reservoir there's still going to be a lot of fluid in this line. So I'm going to get on here with the 6.22 and turn this open. I do have a oil pan underneath to catch because I have a feeling like I say it's going to be a little messy. Here we go. Okay. All right. I'm going to let this drain just so there's less of a mess before I pull that out of the way. You can see it draining there so you can put a catch pan there. Looks like it's mostly done draining. I'm just going to grab this banjo bolt. There's a couple of washers there. We're going to replace those washers though. There you can see I just put a little baggie around the end so this doesn't spill fluid all over the place when I'm pulling it up. I'm going to put a zip tie in that baggie too. I'll just put this to the side over here and there you can see the opening where that goes into the steering rack. You want to clean that surface up. Don't knock anything into there because it'll end up in the system and you want to keep this fluid very clean. I just scooted up towards the front. You can see that's the AC compressor right there. And if we follow this back, this is our hose here. There's a bracket. And it looks like that might be a 10 millimeter. So I'm going to undo that one back there. That is a 10 millimeter. Not going to be much fun to reinstall that, but there's my setup. You can see I got the deep socket on the quarter inch drive flex head. It's slow go, but I can reach it. I finally got that bracket free there. No special skill, just takes a lot of patience. Now there's the reservoir there, and right under the reservoir is the pump, and we're going to do that one there. That is a 17 millimeter. It looks like the best approach is to kind of come this way. And yeah, it looks like that's a pretty pretty good grip there. And we're going to turn that counterclockwise so that's going to be up and towards up towards the camera. Oh, that's pretty tight. There it goes. All right. 
might get a little a little fluid leak here, but probably not too much. And it feels like once that's free, it'll almost turn. Yeah, it'll just turn by hand. And again, we don't want to get any dirt in here either, since it'll end up in the pump. So just be careful you don't knock anything in this hole. I've got a bag ready, but I don't think I'm going to have to catch much. We'll see here. Okay, no. Nope, nothing. Now there is an O-ring on this. And we do not want to double up on the O-rings, so I can't tell if it's on there right now or not. Might have to wait a second and look in there. I'm going to go ahead and drop this out through the bottom. So I'm going to push this down and we'll pull that out through the bottom. I'm using the camera to try to see if I can find that O-ring because I didn't see it on the... I didn't see it on the hose. we got to get that O-ring out if it's in there. All right, I was mistaken. You're looking at a mirror there. Uh, the O-ring is actually on the hose. It's kind of a orangish color. And so if yours, though, if you're looking for yours, go in there with the cell phone or a mirror like this and make sure that it's not in there because you don't want to double up on the O-rings. Back under here, there's our line. I got another bag and I got another container because there's going to be some fluid in here since that's a low spot and I don't want it to go everywhere. So I'll just go ahead and pull this out and then drain it. Put a bag on it and then pull the whole line out. Let's see what we get here. Well, just a little bit. I got the bag on the end there now and I think I'll just be able to pull this out hopefully without spilling a bunch of Oh, power steering fluid all over. Let's see. Uh, it feels like I'm caught on something back there. Okay, I just went and just barely lifted it up in the back and that freed it. And we are out. Here's our replacement part here. You can see uh, we can just compare the ends. This one comes with a new banjo bolt and a couple new washers. And same deal on here. This is this is the O-ring. It comes already installed on this. I'll show you real quick. There it is there, the green thing. And on the old one, uh, I didn't see it right away because it is so crushed. But there it is there. And you can see I can pull it off here. It's just like petrified. All right, let me see if you can see this. It's so, see that? It is so old that it's just falling apart. So if this didn't start leaking where it did, this would have, because it started leaking somewhere down there on the hose, this would have been where it would have leaked next. That thing is just cooked. I also got these washers thinking that I might be able to repair this old hose, but um, I'm not going to be able to, re to repair it. So that is the part number there, though. If you are just removing your hose and you're going to put your same hose back on, you want to replace the washers. These are the ones that go where the banjo bolt side is, the side that goes into the steering rack. Don't reuse the washers. You can see the new one already has this little thing here. And look at that. That just fell apart, too. Like, that got pretty cooked. But we do have to transfer this bracket, which is going to be so much fun to <laughs> reinstall. So you see I just moved it over there. Uh, this thing is pliable enough that if you put it in the wrong spot, you'll be able to completely open it and turn it if you need to. One last thing I'll mention is I always like to shoot compressed air through any kind of new hoses. So I'll clean this out and then we'll go ahead and install this. For install, I'll leave this one on, but I took the banjo bolt out here and the yellow thing just to make it a little smaller so I put a bag over it and some tape and this will be a little easier to get back there I think. I just pulled back that heat protection and this is where it's leaking on this one. This is the original part. You see it's got the Mercedes star and the part number there. This is all covered with oil. I did want to mention you may have noticed the difference in the banjo bolts between the new one and the old one and obviously the crush washers. The old one it's uh, copper and the new one or the aftermarket one, I should say, because I don't know what the new Mercedes ones are, but this is aftermarket. Uh, you can see they're also aluminum and they're thicker. So copper, thinner, aluminum, thicker. So when I saw the difference in the thickness, I thought, well, I wonder if there's a difference in the dimension of this part on the 
on the hose and there is the the new one the aftermarket one that I have is just a little bit less thick here versus this one but the washers are thicker as you saw so dimensionally it comes out to be that with the washers on it before the washers are crushed the new one is about one millimeter wider in total than this one so I'm not worried about uh, I was worried about the difference in the thickness thinking oh boy what did they go real thin here am I gonna over penetrate on this banjo bolt but no the banjo bolts you can see the design is a little different as well the way they threaded it so this one comes all the way down here I'll probably reuse this old banjo bolt but I will use the since I'm going to use the um, the aftermarket hose I will use these thicker these thicker gaskets with it crush washers because like I mentioned the aftermarket one that I have it's just a little bit thinner on the band part so we'll get this in here now There we go. Okay, now I'm back, back almost to where it needs to be. I'll scoot down here. And, all right, I'm good. I'm about where I need to be there. Now I'll grab the bracket, get this slit up here. Just about there. We were not gonna hook this up though. We'll get our we'll get our um, lines positioned before we put that in. That's about where it needs to go though. Back over here, make sure you've got that surface cleaned up there and we'll get this banjo bolt installed. Now you wanna have a crush washer on either side of this so you'll put one on and then pass the bolt through and then you'll put the other one on on the other side you got to kind of watch it that you don't drop it because it looks like this is going to want to fight just a little bit so i'm going to reach my hand around towards the front and grab the other end of the hose just to kind of help me position it a little closer and you can you can see it if you get in just the right position but it looks like i just caught it there yeah just caught those threads there so I'm not going to put it in all the way. I'll just do it hand tight and then get the other end and the bracket and then we'll come back and torque this down. Back up here in the front, we'll just push this up and remember we're going up to the power steering pump. So that's up there. And we'll fasten that from the top. I'm going to go ahead and get this just threaded in on that bracket. Cause I have a feeling the way this hose feels, it feels like it's going to kind of fight me putting it in up there. So I'll go ahead and just get it started down here. This bracket is no fun. I'm going in with a, took a while to try to even get it in the hole. Now it's in and I'm using a deep socket by hand. I'm going to stop there, but uh, yeah, this is where I put my arm uh, kind of between the, kind of between the oil pan uh, but I also was able to get my arm a little down there to push it in but if you've got big hands and big forearms that might be a little tough for you there back up here we're going for this that that uh, fitting right there on the power steering pump you can see that green o-ring there and let me tuck this down and try to get this lined up here okay there's a lot of stuff in your way, you want to be careful. You got AC lines, you got coolant lines, you got power steering lines. So. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm in front. I'm in front like the radiator, and you can see I'm using my, let's see, I'm using my left arm to kind of turn it to get it lined up because I can actually see it from here. There it goes. Okay, let's get that. Oh, let's get that in there. Okay, now I'll slip the fitting on and just hand tighten this. Well, there it caught right there. Okay. 
The only way I can really get on there is by standing in front, like I said, and reaching my arm around like this. And then, you know, it's it's um, tightened now, but I kind of had to position this because it wanted to turn a little bit. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to torque it all the way down. I'm just going to tighten it a little bit with the 17 millimeter. And then we'll go back and torque that, torque that banjo bolt down and then come back and torque this down. Before you get that one tightened down all the way up there, you have to remember that uh, this is going to be about in this position. It's to kind of protect the hose from bouncing off of the, the compressor. You don't, if you have it placed wrong, you might have this such that it's right even pushing up the, against the belt. So keep that in mind before you fasten that all the way down. That's just hand tight now so I can still move it and adjust it. We'll go ahead and torque that banjo bolt now, down now. Same deal down here, this hose kind of wants to fight, so don't let it get all the way over here by the by the intermediate shaft uh, going into the to top of the rack. You know, give it a little bit of clearance, and then we'll torque this down, torque on this banjo bolt is 22 foot-pounds. Couldn't really film torquing this down because I ended up blocking the camera because I had to kind of go in here, like right about there with the pry. You just a long screwdriver or whatever. Just the reason is because this is going to want to turn as you're turning this clockwise. So if you just go in here and just put a pry or something to prevent this from touching. You just want to have space on either side of this hose. You don't want it rubbing up against anything. Back up here, again, make sure that your hose is not rubbing up against the belt anywhere. Make sure that it's got clearance. And then we'll get that fastened down. If you can get a torque wrench on that with a crow's foot, the torque on that is 33 foot-pounds. That's pretty tight. So if you can't get a torque wrench on it, you probably remember how tight it was uh, to loosen it. So it's pretty tight. When you're getting a wrench on here, you want to make sure that you are all the way on there. All the way on there. Not just a little bit because uh, it's pretty easy to slip on this. And when you're turning it, make sure it's not turning the hose. If you're interested, I was able to get a torque wrench on there using a crow's foot and about a one inch extension there. I'll pull this out and show you. There's the setup there. You can see I've got a crow's foot and about a one inch extension. This is a three eighth inch drive torque wrench. It's pretty long and it was it's tight. With that flare nut torque done, that's it on the install. Now we just have to refill and bleed the system. At this point, you want to figure out what kind of fluid you have in your system. And you have two options. You can either just refill with the amount of fluid that you need and bleed it out, or you can go ahead and do a flush. I'm going to do a flush on this vehicle, so I'll show that. But uh, the reason I mentioned about the fluid type is originally these vehicles were, were filled with this fluid. This is Mercedes-Benz spec. 236.3 and you can see there's some part numbers on there and I will put up a part number as well. Of the original fill on these vehicles was a uh, non-synthetic brown kind of it's a kind of like a honey colored uh, fluid that ages to be a brown color somewhere around 2007 2008 the new spec came out for the newer design on the power steering racks and that spec is mercedes-benz 345.0 i'll put that spec up that fluid is synthetic and it's green and so if you were draining your system and you saw green fluid coming out, then if you're not doing a flush, you want to go back in with green fluid. That 345.0 spec, the most common thing that you would find on that is Pentacin CHF11S. And again, that's a green synthetic fluid. So if you're looking at a fluid and it's synthetic, but you've got honey colored brown fluid in there, you don't want to mix these. Go one or go the other. In this vehicle, since we already got about half of the fluid out, I'm going to go ahead and flush it. But I'm going to go back in with what it already has. This vehicle still has the um, original power steering fluid. To do that flush, the system capacity is about 1.2 liters. I got two liters of this here. This is the same stuff as this. In fact, there's the Mercedes-Benz part number. And this is Phoebe, Phoebe, Febby. I don't know how you say that. But it's German and it's Bilstein or Bilstein. And I got this at Napa. This was uh, about 9 bucks for, for one 
liter and the system capacity like I said is 1.2 liters with two liters we could do a full flush have a little extra so you're looking at about you know maybe 20 bucks on fluid if you get the sit Napa they use that part number they don't use that Phoebe part number so if you ask them you need to give them that full part number there and I'll put up a screenshot That's the only only auto parts store that I've been able to find is that. The other option, of course, is to order it. And I should also mention, you can see here on the bottle of this unpronounceable German word that it's got that spec right there. From Mercedes-Benz 236.3. So again, I've seen on the forums and plenty of people have said that they have gone ahead and flushed out this old spec, this 236.3 spec, and gone in with the with the Pentasin CHF 11S or one of the other 345 specs, and that they haven't had any problems. Do a little research on that. Determine what you want to do. Whether you just want to refill with whatever you have, or if you want to do a flush, or if you want to do a flush and a change over to a different spec. Next then you'll see us go ahead and refill with this and flush and bleed. The whole idea with the flush is we're going to push the old fluid through the whole system up and out and before it gets to the reservoir we're going to catch it and put it into a catch pan. So we're going to be the reservoir so to speak. We're going to be pouring in constantly, pouring in new fluid until we see totally clear brand new fluid coming out of the out of the line. So all you'll need to do the flush is, if you can, possibly get a barb like this, a 3 8 inside diameter barb. And then some clear tubing. It doesn't have to be clear, but uh, the clear is nice because you can see the color change. And so that's uh, this is half inch outside. This is, whoopsie, the outside diameter doesn't matter. On this this is uh, also 3 8 you can see there 3 8 inside diameter you can get this at like a pet store in the fish section they sell different tube length you know it's maybe a 25 cents a fluid or something so this is really all you need for the flush procedure and then a container to put this into so I pushed the benzy off the ramps and now what I'm gonna do is lift up the front so the wheels aren't on the ground to get it off the ramps, what I did, I had somebody sit in the vehicle and cover the brake and then I just rocked it a little bit and it slid down. You don't want to start the engine until you've got the system bled. Here are the lift points. You can see it's on. Uh, you want the jack to lift on the square part, that big cross member there, not this circle part, not the circle part. And then you can just set your jack stands on either end of that same member. You just need it so the wheels are just off the ground. Since we got the reservoir empty, the system already opened up and we got to bleed it anyway. It's not a bad time to do a fluid flush, so I'm going to go ahead and do that on this vehicle. To do that, since there's no fluid in this reservoir, I can disconnect this. This is the return line. It's coming from, if you follow the other side of this, it's coming out of the radiator. There's a part of the radiator where the power steering fluid is cooled. So this is the return back to the power steering uh, reservoir. So if we disconnect that, we can use a steering wheel. Um, with, again, since we got the vehicle elevated, don't run the engine, we'll just use the steering wheel to push all new fluid through here and we'll push the old fluid out and stop when we see uh, new fluid coming in. This is just a worm screw style hose clamp, so nothing crazy. Just undo it and pull it back and we'll be able to pull this hose off. A little fluid might come out, we'll see. We'll see how much comes out. Let's see what we get here. Got some paper towels just in case and nothing. So we'll use this as our flush line and we'll put a hose on here as a PZO so we can kind of watch it. I've got a 3 8 barb here. If you don't have a barb you could just use a hose to go over it. Put that barb in there and that other side of that goes to your clear tube which will go to our container. I'll go ahead and tighten this down. So there's the setup. This return hose, the one from the radiator, that's the one we'll be watching. The fluid will come out here other side of this is just going up and into a container and then the other this uh, that feature there on the reservoir that hose on there that that's what we use as our guide for the reservoir level we'll refill this now clean funnel and your new 
fluid, whichever fluid you're going in with, whichever one you decide to do. And I'm just going to kind of lift up the, I'm going to lift it up so I can see in there, so I just don't want it to overflow and make a mess. And we'll be able to get a little bit of an idea of the level by looking at the, that other hose. I don't know if you can see it, how that's raising there. So that's raising up. So we're pretty good right there. And now we'll go in and turn the wheel from lock to lock. I did not turn it all the way because I want to make sure I'm not drawing down too much on the fluid. I'll go ahead and pour a little bit more in there. I didn't even go all the way to one side just yet. Get some more fluid in there. If you have two people, this goes even better. Need to add a little bit more fluid in now. I'm, I'm backing about the middle, so all I've done is from the center, I went all the way one direction and then back to the middle. And I have not gone all the way to the other direction just yet. You can see we're pulling fluid out right here. You can see that line. I'll go back in and finish turning it. And that's full lock the other way. So let me check that level. You kind of get the drift of what's going on. I'll add a little bit more. I'm just gonna keep doing this until I have fresh fluid coming out here. I've done a total of uh, four movements of the wheel. One one way, one the other, one back and one the other. And you can see we're already getting some cleaner fluid through here. So I'll keep going. I've already put in about, uh, probably about three quarters of a liter. And now I'm on this different bottle because that bottle wasn't all the way filled up. can see I got all clear clear fluid coming out there so at this point I can go ahead and take all this hosing out it's gonna be a little messy some fluids gonna leak but just try to work as quickly as you can to reconnect that uh, return line to the reservoir and it can reduce the mess quite a bit I had to move the camera because I just couldn't work around it but all I did here was I put the other end of this hose into soda can and move that down there to try to catch some of the fluid and I'm not doing the best job of it it's kind of making a mess but now I'm gonna hopefully without dislodging it from the soda can down there I'm going to do the swaparoo on this here just be careful with this feature on the reservoir because it is plastic you don't want to break anything So we'll get this in place, then we'll top it off and do the full bleed. Make sure you tighten that hose clamp up there. Now we'll use the system itself to bleed by turning the steering wheel. You don't want to turn the engine on, leave the engine off. Just put the key to the on position so you can turn the steering wheel.
if you didn't do the flush and you just did the hose, you'll probably see more bubbles than you, what you'll see right now because that whole line will be filled with air and then you'll have poured in. Since we were flushing it, we kind of got some of the air bubbles out and we, we have a bunch of air in that line from the radiator to the reservoir, but that line's a lot smaller than the line, the big line we replaced. So I'm gonna go in, turn the wheel. I'll just go one uh, from the center to one side either way and you should be able to see some bubbles here. So I just went there from the center all the way to one side. I'm just checking the level to make sure that there's still some in there. I'll go back to the other side. So I'm all the way back to the other side. It looks like the level's looking pretty good. Now we're gonna go back and forth 30 times, lock to lock. You wanna keep an eye up here for uh, the bubbles and you wanna make sure that there aren't any bubbles coming out. That's when you wanna stop. Here's a quick recap of the bleeding procedure. Do not start the engine. It's very important that you do not start the engine because if you do, you'll bring in air bubbles that will be very difficult to remove. So just don't start the engine. Be sure that your lights and radio are off to prevent draining the battery down. If you have a helper, have one person watch the level while the other person turns the steering wheel. Otherwise, you'll have to do both those actions yourself. Once the level stabilizes, you can do about five turns and then check the level. Don't let the reservoir run low or else you'll have to start the bleed over again because you'll bring in more air. Expect to turn the wheel from lock to lock about 30 times or until you don't see or hear any more air bubbles. You may even have to do it more than 30 times. I've done it about 15 times now, and you can see the level has dropped some, but there's still some bubbles, so we'll keep going. And this is all I'm doing. I'm just sitting in here, slowly turning the wheel all the way to one side and then back to the other, right there. And you can kind of hear, you'll hear some of the air bubbles kind of moving sometimes. And I noticed like when I would go, there'd be a little spot where I could sort of hear a bubble and so after I got the 30, 35 turns in, I would just kind of rework the spot. Like, let's say there was a bubble here and it would make a bubble noise right there. I'd shoot past it just a little bit and then come back and just sort of work that particular area to get the bubbles out. So here is the bleeding procedure. We've already done this. Now you can see we're just going to start the vehicle and let it run for about one minute and keep an eye on the level. And then after it's been idling for about a minute, we'll turn the wheel from stop to stop several times and check the level. So what I did was I went ahead and dropped it because I don't like starting the vehicle when it's on, on jack stands. I dropped it and idled um, for a minute and then I turned the wheel back and forth a few times, checked the level and it looks good. Now the last step is just to get the fluid level correct to where it needs to be. So you'll notice on here that there are two sets of marks. You can see there, you've got 80 C, 80 Celsius max and min, and 20 C, 20 Celsius max and min. 20 Celsius is gonna be your room temperature, so just the temperature when the vehicle hasn't been running, and your 80 Celsius is going to be your operating temperature. So what I'll do is I'll just get it at the max 20 Celsius, take it for a test drive, check it, and make sure that it's gone up a little bit, uh, not stayed the same or gone down, because as it heats up, it should rise, because the fluid will expand as it heats up. It's a very little amount of fluid to go from the max 20C to the max 80C. Um, it's better to have it just a little less than too much, but what you can do to get fluid out of here, since it is so small, you can actually just take a straw, put your thumb, or well, go in with the straw open, put your thumb over the top once it's in the fluid, and then pull it out. And that'll just bring out, you know, about that much of the fluid in the straw. Just do that a few times and you can make an adjustment. 
or as I showed before at the beginning of the video, you can go in with like a turkey baster or some type of um, lotion thing and you can just take a little bit out. But it's a very small adjustment that you need to make. You just want to have it between the min and max uh, for whichever temperature you're checking it at. So just to be sure, I'll check for leaks. I'll start her up, put her up on ramps and check this connection here. The one to the power steering pump and also the one back at the power steering rack. This line back here. Oh, that looks good. No leaks. So everything looks good. The fluid level looks good. No more bubbles, no more sounds, no more leaks. So what you want to do is be sure to check after the first day or two of driving just to be sure that your fluid level is still good. And if you need to top off a little, do that. Otherwise, hopefully you got a full bleed and you're all set. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching and good luck with your repair.